Retro Rob's Gaming Videos. Hey Rob here, and we are going to talk about the Commodore 64 plug and play, which is near and dear to my heart because the Commodore 64 was my first computer and probably my most loved. The Commodore 64 is also the best selling single computer in history. Sold uh, just, and, and I'm just talking conservatively, uh, the best numbers that I can find. 12.5 million. I've heard as high as 30 million, but 12.5 million Commodore 64s have sold. That's like uh, far and above the number one selling single model of computer in history. Uh, by the way, just for comparison, the Apple II, which you know Apple always claimed, oh, we had the best selling computer, which is a total lie, Apple. And I'm not an Apple hater. I'm recording this on a Mac for Christ's sake. But Apple lies a lot, and that's kind of their thing. But anyway, they sold 4.5 million Apple IIs over the lifetime, uh, and that's over the whole span of Apple IIs. You know, Apple II Cs, Apple II Es, Apple II Pluses, all those crappy, not, not crappy. They were good systems. Sorry about that. The old anger dies hard. Uh, <laughs> they uh, sold 4.5 million anyway uh, over time. Blah, stay on topic. Man, I am like too much coffee today. Anyway, the C64 plug and play was made by Mammoth Toys back in 2004. This is an official release. Uh, they got the rights from Tulip Computers. <laughs> Tulip freaking computers, who apparently own the Commodore name now. Uh, there were several versions of this made. Uh, I think only one was made in the U.S. The other two were made in Europe uh, for the PAL market. And it looks a lot like the old Competition 2 joystick from the 80s. It doesn't actually feel like one as I remember. It feels a little bit eh, creakier than the original. That might just be my model that I got. I got this one at an uh, antique shop, of all things, for like... 16 bucks so that's a really good deal considering i've seen these sell as high as 150 nobody's getting that and as low as about 35 to 50 that's about average for getting one of these so what is it well it's basically a handheld commodore 64 it's got an a button a b button uh i don't think it really matters because commodore 64 only had one button although i think some later games supported two um, A, B, C, and D button. They feel pretty good. The button, the buttons are a little springy, but so are the original Commodore buttons. On the front, we have the power supply on and off. And in the back, we have composite out. And of course, it's mono because the Commodore 64 was mono. There's about 30 games on this thing. So I'm going to show you my favorite three off of these, and then I'll make some commentary on how I feel about this unit. See you in a little bit. And we're back with the Commodore 64 plug and play. Yep, loads up just like a regular Commodore 64. And here we have a nice hack menu. Going down on the controller. <laughs> that sounded good. Moving down. <laughs> on the controller goes down moving up moves up so let's select Jumpman Jr. going right and left do nothing you would expect it to tab but it doesn't and pressing the L button which is the left button starts a game and here is Jumpman Jr. now here's something to note to select players I just waggle the joystick so up left down oops down and right and that selects it because there's no keyboard and for whatever reason they decide not to map that to a b c and d i think those are the function keys okay so same thing here it's interesting though because if you notice i'm having a horrible time trying to select see different speeds there we're gonna go with one but you just kind of uh, move it around and it's a, a radial type of thing all right. Ah, that is really freaking fast. Holy crud. Okay, so one is the fastest. You know what? Let's <laughs> let's not do that. That was really, really fast. That's ridiculous. Come on, hurry up. All right, so lesson learned. Do not use speed number one. 
on Jumpman Jr. I had no idea the Commodore 64 could even go that fast. One. So we're going to go four <laughs> with our speed. That was redonkulous. I can't believe I said redonkulous. Sorry about that, folks. Here we go. All right, so there's a bullet, and I better jump away from it. Up I go with the rope. Had a really hard time with these controls at first. But you get used to them. And it's not too bad. It's really just that I'm not used to having a game controller with such a long throw. See how freaking mean this game is, though? It's ridiculous. And I'll just play through one level. Come on, jump man. Ooh. I hate that part. I just fell off. Oops. And that is one of the difficulties with this as a game. It's not to do with the joystick itself. It's to do with the stinking game. The controls are questionable. There we go. Come on, just let me finish this level. Yay. Uh, no, let me off. <sighs> off the screen. How do you go up and down? It's really annoying. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. There. Still, this was one of the number one games for the Commodore 64 early on, and it actually is pretty good. Now let's look at something else for a minute here. Next. And here we have Pit Stop 2. While my friends were playing pole position, I had Pit Stop 2. I think I got the better deal, honestly. So what's so cool about Pit Stop 2? Well, let me show you here. Let's start the race. Number one, we had split screen gaming here. How cool is this? But number two, uh, and the really cool part is that your tires would wear out. Also, you'd run out of fuel. So that's three points that made it better than pole position. And really, uh, this is an excellent game, and it holds up well even today which a whole lot of racing games do not. Hold on a second, I'm going to beat up my tire a little bit. Ugh. This is a sequel, by the way. The first game's quite good as well. If you see the top of my tire is uh, turning color a little bit, and that indicates that it's worn out or wearing out. Come on, get out of my way. And let's go for a pit stop. Nice looking game too, especially for the Commodore 64. Go, go, go. Oop. Flying off the edge here. Oh, no! <laughs> I'd like to not actually blow a tire before I make it to a pit stop. I spent hours on this game, though it doesn't really show the way I'm playing right now. Come on. Come on. I think you had to actually decelerate around the corners to make it. And again, the controller is performing pretty admirably. I'm having no problems. I am getting a little bit of a hand cramp, though. All right. Pit stop. So here's my tire guy. And he's going to go replace a tire. <sighs> no, not this tire. Ah, well, fine. There he goes. Repair another tire. 
Come on, walk into it. I'm going to gas up. Now go. And on with the race. So that's pretty cool. Let's go on to the next game. Boop. This one's one of my favorites from the Commodore 64 era and indeed from the Amiga era. And I think I reviewed the high def remake of it. And that game is... Uh, come on, Speedball. There it is. And here's my third game. It's Speedball. I want to say Brutal Deluxe, but no, it's not Brutal Deluxe. It's just the original Speedball. And it is harder than I remember it, man. It certainly is uh, harder than... The newest version, shoot, newest versions of it. That said, it plays pretty much the same. Ah, oh, damn. Come on. You just basically try to get your ball into a goal while beating the living crap out of the other team. And yet again, the controller works fine. Uh, does pretty well. It's a little creaky. You can hear it creaking in the background, I'm guessing. Ah, there we go. Oh, come on. I did not miss that. That is bupkiss. There we go. Uh, go. No. Uh, come on. Anyway, yeah, it works really well. I'm going to reset to the main menu here. And I'm going to go through all the games that are available. And tell you what I think of this thing. All right. So I'm going to scroll through here. And just go through every game. Uh, not play every game. I'm just going to show you every game that's in here. And I'm going to tell you that I like this device quite a bit. It's fun to play. Um, it's honestly because they're so expensive right now, it's hard to really recommend them unless you're really short on space. Because in reality you could just buy a real Commodore 64 for about the price of one of these and you could probably buy one of those little USB uh, fake 1541s that are really really cool and have a full Commodore 64 experience as opposed to a limited sampling but if you do want to just relive a few games and you don't mind the fact that you don't have a keyboard or anything else that constitutes a computer or if you're looking for something to hack, because you can put like everything onto this if you're willing to do a little soldering, well then it's a pretty decent device. So I'll give it a thumbs up, but it's a cautionary thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more.